Well, hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the Scout Prepper channel. So today, another great piece of gear from Kelty. These guys never cease to amaze me. You've seen my review over a year ago on the Kelty Eagle 128 pack. Well, this is the little brother, the Kelty Falcon 66, which is also known as the Falcon 4000, and it is in the Kelty military tactical lineup. So not as common as some of their normal hiking backpacking packs, but their military packs are a little more rugged, a little more tailored towards your tactical community, your military community, and the colors, although Kelty's changed a lot of their colors to more greens and tans, the colors are normally a little more military-like as well. Now, I love the Eagle 128. It's a 7,850 cubic pack, cubic inch pack. It's one of the biggest on the market, and it holds everything. As you know, I use it for kind of a get out of Dodge or you know, uh, never coming home bag, inch bag as they say, because I have a full system in that bag with not only a tent, a sleeping bag, and cook set, and hunting stuff, and fishing stuff, things like that, but I also have some clothes in there, I have some extra food and what have you. But I don't always want a big 54, I think, pound pack, that is, when it's fully loaded, my setup. I wanted something smaller for get home. Now, I know you're already thinking, oh my God, He's using a bag this big for your get home bag. Well, remember that this is 4,000 cubic inch without the lid. It's 3620, so it puts it, the lid is removable. So 3620, it puts it right in there at a lot of the bigger bags like the Red Wing 50 from Kelty, uh, the 511 Rush 72, which is what I was using and things like that. So it's not really as big as it looks on camera. It's a very narrow bag but just taller, so it's kind of skinny and tall. Really great pack. So it's made out of 500D Cordura and 1000D. So some parts, like the bottom, are in 1000. The rest of the body is in 500, which keeps some of the weight down. And yes, this pack is a little heavy for a 65 liter pack, 4,000 cubic inch pack with the top. We're looking at five pounds 14. So that is a little heavy but look at what it is. It's super rugged. It has a lot of extra strapping and molly webbing that you wouldn't have on a normal hiking backpack and that does add some weight. No big deal. It also comes with an integrated rain cover which a lot of packs don't so that's some weight there that you would have to add on if you had a separate rain cover. So let me show you the pack and then I'll do a separate video on what's in the pack as my get home bag. So on the the outside, you see one long pocket, and that's it. There are no side pockets at all, although there's molly webbing top and bottom on both sides. But as it comes from the factory, one long pocket. It has some organization with a fleece pocket there, which I have some glasses in. It has organization pockets here with a mesh, multiple pen and pencil, whatever pockets. Uh, a zipper pocket with some stuff and, and there's multiple levels of everything so lots of organization in your front pocket and it's so deep that you can actually I have a trauma kit there so bandanas you could stuff quite a bit of stuff in here raised up above the little organizer pockets if you wanted to but I just kind of left it like that this pack just so you know my pack fully out, outfitted and the pack weighs 5 pounds 14 ounces but my pack is 30 pounds so it doesn't have complete load that, you know, it's not packed to the gills. I like to leave some extra room in bags. I don't want to fill them to the max in case I need to add some extra gear at the last minute, take on some gear from a buddy or a family member, or I find something as I'm going on whatever the situation is, the adventure is that I'm in. So you can get into the pack, the main section, in two ways, and that's my most favorite part of this pack. You can get into it here with the zippers, or you can get into it with a flip lid, a normal top flip lid, and I'll show you that in a second. So, to the zipper side, and this is always the easiest for me unless I need something off the top, and that's kind of where I keep my rain gear, but it folds open. More organization here, you see it, one long mesh pocket, it's not divided off, and I have toilet paper and what have you in there, and it's mesh so you can see, and then inside, as you see, it's just one big cavernous pocket, and I have all kinds of little stuff in there. Again, I'll do a separate video. Inside, and it's hard to get to them, but inside there are two little half-length tube pockets on the sides that are open top. And people put all kinds of stuff in there, like you put, uh, you may put some type of pole or something like that that you're having to carry in there. It's good little side organization. I'm not using them on mine. I just flatten them down because they're soft and collapsible and go like that. So you see the 
straps here for the top. Everything has kind of cinches and load bearing in mind. And I'll flip this up and show you the top. You know, so you see the lid, and the lid is convertible. This is the same lid, it appears to me, off the Eagle 128. And of course, I added this 511 6x6 med pouch on the top of mine to the Molly that's over the whole lid. So this little pouch, this piece, doesn't come with it. But the lid is convertible, meaning that you can take it off or leave it on. I left it on, though I don't really have anything in it because I thought, well, it's only about 14 ounces, so no big deal because I've already got a 30 pound pack. I weigh 225, so a 30 pound load on my back is not the end of the world. I've already test hiked with this about four miles and it feels just fine, so it fits me well. The weight is manageable for my level of fitness, which is not real high. I mean, I'm not way out of shape, but I'm not way in shape either. And uh, so I left the lid on. If I was really trying to shave ounces, or I really didn't need the space, you can take this off. You see the buckles here. Take this completely off with the center Velcro 2 fast hex buckles, and then you pull this, and you can take out a brand new lid. And this would be on the top, and it would be a flush pack, as you see right there. I have it with the pocketed lid on the top, because that's what I like. So that's kind of how that works. And you've seen that also on the Eagle. I'll show you that on the Eagle. So they, they although the Eagle's a double the size pack, they do retain the uh, interchangeable or the uh, removable lid concept on this one. And then you see it's just a normal spin drip collar. You can get into it that way, just like a standard pack, all the way down. It's one pocket. There is no separate sleeve compartment on this, like there is on the Eagle 128, like there is on the Army's Molly 2, or like there is on the Marine Corps Philby pack. So the separate sleep compartment is pretty popular. I do like that. But again, this isn't a full-fledged, I'm going backpacking for forever in this backpack or even a week-long deal. This, in my case, is a get-home bag. So it has the stuff necessary to get me home. And that may sound outlandish to you guys, but I work 44 miles from home, so it might take me a week to get home if I ever had to leave during some type of natural disaster. Say the Dallas area where there's some type of tornado or what have you. Those are the threats we really have, you know. And Dallas has also been, if you didn't know this, prone to a ton of earthquakes. They're getting, you know, 15, 20 a month all the time over in the Irving area. I don't work in that area, but they are hitting Dallas. And we, you know, so that's just something that exists. They're always minor, but you never know. The point of some emergency gear, even if I never have to put this on my back, is that I have it with me. So if I need some type of first aid while I'm at work, I have it. If I need some type of food, some type of situation where my car is broken down, I have to spend the night in it or what have you. I have food, water, shelter, fire, some clothes, some navigation, things like that, and some extra communication. So anyway, back to the pack. So the lid is convertible. I say that because the lid comes off. You take the lid off and with the straps already included, it becomes a fanny pack. Pretty cool, huh? See the straps in there? They just tuck under here, and now you have waist pack straps that come out, and this is a fanny pack. That's why I put the med kit on there as well, because if I ever took this lid off and loaded it up with some gear, now my medical kit, although be it very small, is coming with me. It has an internal zipper pocket here for some gear. I'm not really using it, and it has two outside half moon pockets here for like a water bottle or what have you. Now they fit the Nalgene bottle, the 32 ounce, perfectly with room to spare actually. But the length of like the Camp Moore stainless steel bottles and some of the other stainless steel bottles pokes out too far, it's too long. So you can't use that. In here I do, just to show you the length, I have a Maxpedition cuboid with my fire kit in there and a headlamp. So full depth pockets. Uh, pretty easy and it would be kind of handy to have, I thought, something like your fire kit and your headlamp in the top. It also has one long zip pocket that you see there, runs the length of the bottom underneath and you can put stuff in there. I don't, I don't have anything in it right now. So that's kind of the pack. You can see on the suspension there that it's standard Kelty military style stuff. So you have really padded uh, straps. You don't have that center um, padding here which helps your back breathe a little bit. No channel here, which I would have liked to have seen, though I've never really seen the complete effectiveness of that. Two full-length stay bars here, and then a super padded waist belt. The waist belt does have molly, unlike a lot of backpacking bags, molly on both sides. 
And so on mine, I've added a holster here. Again, this is some type of emergency. And I've added a GPS pouch from 511. GPS strobe pouch with the Garmin eTrex 20 in there. And a flashlight over here, and that's just a little AA um, Streamlight ProTac 2AA is what that is. So a PT2AA as they call it now. It does have a carry handle here if you're having to load it. It does have a carry handle here if you're having to, let me get that in there, here and here, top and bottom. And then the way you adjust the torso length, I believe it's rated at 17 to 22. I have to check that. Somewhere in there, which is pretty standard adult male pack, although this would fit a female as well. Uh, just doesn't have the curvature to the straps that a lot of the dedicated female packs have. You lift the Velcro here. You do the same on the other side, and then you can slide, very ingenious, you can slide this shoulder harness up and down. And that's what I did. It actually came a little bit short for me one inch or so and I moved it up and man now the waist belt is really on my hips taking most of the weight the straps are a lot more comfortable so you can adjust it up and down now I'm pretty average size guy I'm six foot 225 so not real small but not super tall my son's six two already and I tried it on him you can move this up and it still fits I think it would fit somebody even a little taller maybe six three six four if you went all the way up so quite a bit of adjustment here all in all it's a great backpack and you're probably wondering why he told me the price well prices are relative but it is a little high here's what I did the pack is listed I think at $2.99 by most retailers so it's 300 bucks but I went to uscav.com. I don't have any affiliation with those guys. I've never spoken to them at all. But uh, they were selling it cheaper. They were selling it about $235. The same for my Eagle 128 a couple years ago. I got it was $400 everywhere, and I went there and it was $290 or something like that. So for some reason, US Cav has a real good deal on the Kelty full-size military packs, the Eagle and the Falcon, and probably more, I'm not sure, but the, I went there, and then when I went on there, they had, lo and behold, a 48-hour, 25% off sale in a banner for, with a code right on their homepage. So I got 25% off. I got it less than $200. So that's a great backpack now. That will last the rest of my life probably. It is a Kelty Military, and it's good to go. A couple of little details that I didn't show you. It does have an ice axe loop at the bottom. Some people like, some people don't. You can hang stuff from there. It does have drainage holes, little grommets, at the bottom of the accessory pocket, the big pocket outside. It does have two drainage holes at the bottom of the main compartment as well. So it does have that, although Lord knows you hope that you never have to use drainage holes. Now, also at the bottom, I mentioned, there's a zipper, and in there is a full-length rain cover, also in tan, right there. So you do have an integrated rain cover and it's strapped actually to the pocket so you can't lose it but you can pull that out cover the whole pack in case of severe dirt uh, some type of sandstorm some type of debris blowing or even uh, a big rainstorm so that's cool because i hate for my gear to get wet although that's not foolproof it is a great thing to have i personally put a pack cover on just about every pack that i've ever had even as a boy scout as a kid and uh, as an adult now so that's it guys as always, I appreciate the views and subscriptions. Keep them coming. As you know, Scout Prepper is part of a three-channel network with Scout Tactical on the guns and gear, Scout Prepper on the emergency prep gear, and Scout Hunter on the hunting gear, hunting guns, hunting adventures, things like that. Check them all out on YouTube. Check us out on the web at scouttactical.com, on Facebook, on Instagram. And as always, thanks for watching.